Well, it's loosely called the same job, same pay legislation, or more accurately, the closing the loophole bill. Until now, the government has faced strong resistance from a united business lobby to have it passed. But the Workplace Relations Minister, Tony Burke, seems determined to pick off employers one at a time. First, the Australian Hotels Association. That was last week. Now, the Australian Resource and Energy Employers Association have done deals so that service contractors won't be subject to the legislation but Labor hire workers will. Someone who's been consistent in his opposition to this legislation is Innes Willex, Chief Executive of the Australian Industry, Industry Group, who joins me now from Canberra. And it's always good to chat to you about this. Um, do you get a sense that the government is closer to getting this legislation through the parliament? Well, Ross, I think this has got a long way to run, uh, the agreement that was signed by one employer group with the Minister Yesterday is just one part of one part of a many part a piece of legislation that's being proposed. This deals with one component of the labour hire issue, and it doesn't deal with the labour hire issue for thousands of Australian businesses and tens of thousands of Australian labour hire workers. So that still has to be worked through. And in fact, you could argue that the government really had no intent of picking up these workers who were covered off by this agreement yesterday, they sort of stumbled into it and now fixed something they probably weren't wanting to do in the first place anyhow. So uh, a long way to go. Still big issues around casuals, around labour hire more generally, generally uh, right of entry provisions for unions and some work still to work through on contracting and trucking and the like. So this has got a long way to run. Uh, we're happy to talk to the government any time uh, and we have been talking to the government, but there's some significant issues that we still need to work through. At the very heart of it, and you're hearing this all the time from your members, is the need for flexibility in the workplace uh, so that business, when it's growing or shrinking, can actually adapt to those conditions at that time. And that's where labour hire comes in. That's where casuals come in. Uh, but it seems as though if you are then determined to have those people become full-time employees the natural instincts of business is going to be simply not to hire those people in the first place. Well, absolutely, not to hire or to downsize or to resize to, to fit into an environment where they feel that they can be more profitable and able to be more agile. And that's a big problem. Ross, at a, my organisation, we've seen a big uptick in calls in recent weeks from employers around redundancy and redundancy provisions. That's telling us that, uh, that we're getting to a point in the economy with flatlining productivity, more regulation, uh, a tightening of government uh, demands on, on industry in all sorts of different ways that a lot of businesses are saying, we just can't go on like this. Uh, and this is just one part of the puzzle that employers are facing every day. And when they look at what's coming and they look at what's happening with productivity, they look at what's happening around the world with geopolitics and the like, they're starting to have to think to make about making some hard decisions. And that's why, you know, we understand where the government's coming from. They believe that they have the right to uh, to make some change within the, within the workplace environment. And, of course, we can have those discussions, but we want to ensure that any changes that are made are not detrimental to employment uh, or to the ability of businesses to adjust as they need to. How do you sense that the politics of this stack up in the Senate at the moment? I mean, you've got the Coalition and One Nation that have teamed up to oppose this legislation, but where do those independent senators sit right now as, as you see it? Well, we've been in discussions with the Senate crossbench uh, and the government and the opposition. I think this has got a fair way to play out. I, I won't talk on behalf of individual uh, members of parliament, but I think there are some real concerns still around the casual provisions that the government has put forward, uh, which will make it higher for, for businesses to uh, engage casuals and will mean more job uncertainty for people who are employed as casuals. There's still some concern, real concern around the labour hire provisions in particular, uh, and concerns around issues around contracting, uh, trucking and the like. But I think all this is going to play out. Uh, Parliament will sit next week and then again early next year and there'll be committee hearings, I believe, on January the 22nd again. So this is something that's going to play out right through into the new year. It doesn't make a lot of sense for parts of the government to want to declare war on employers at a time when the economy is in a really rough patch at the moment. So we just need to sit down and work these issues through. 
And given the fact that uh, the Reserve Bank, you've got the government itself, Treasury, forecasting a rise in unemployment, do you, is your own sense that if this legislation goes through, that that will only accelerate those ranks of unemployed? What it will do, Ross, if it goes through in its current form, is make it harder for businesses to employ and to retain labour and to give labour the certainty, workers the certainty that they need and want. Uh, we have real concerns that this will contribute to a couple of things, increased unemployment, fewer employment opportunities, and will do nothing to improve productivity. We had the Reserve Bank Governor just this week say that you know, we're getting to the point where wages must be linked, wage increases must be linked with productivity. We don't know how many times government and others have to hear that message before we really act on it, or else it will have really poor consequences for the workforce across the country, unfortunately. Because if this does go through, your argument is that it will actually take productivity backwards, which adds the wages, pressures and inflation and therefore interest rates. Exactly. And so the government's trying to do a lot of really good things in productivity, but they're all long term. Where parts of this legislation will go will, will be to impact productivity, employment and employment opportunity in the short term at a time when we need to be doing our utmost to improve productivity and to ensure that people are in a stable work and have opportunities for the future. Uh, this legislation pushes against all of that, and that's a big concern from a macro level. From a micro level, businesses are looking at this and making assessments around what their workforce needs will be if this regime goes through, and the answer to that question is not good for employment. Innes Willis, it's always good to have you in the program. Many thanks for your time today. Thanks, Ross. Take care.